lesson. You are expected to identify the nature of anomaly, differentiate the three cases to be considered in anomaly detection, and appreciate the use of anomaly detection. What is anomaly detection? So when we say anomaly detection, it's actually a variation from the norm. What is then the basis of this norm? Now in our world, we have the assumption that there are a lot of processes and behaviors that follow certain processes, that follow certain norms. And this is the kind of assumption that is being followed in so many fields like engineering, health and sciences, and even businesses. These processes, these behaviors, actually form a certain system. And out of this system, we can be able to identify observable data. So we can now make some observations. And out of these observations, we can make our assumptions. We can make our hypothesis. This hypothesis can be based on a case-to-case -case basis. It can be a certain hypothesis based on a certain business. It can be a hypothesis based on a certain social health. So we have here, for example, in our case, the energy consumption. And we can see the data in 96 hours for four consecutive days. The process is somewhat predictable. And we can see here that there is seasonality of our data. And going to number 96, actually towards the end, we could see that there is a spike in the data. And this spike in our data is too different from the observations, the observable data that we have so far. So as you could see, this spike is anomalous because it deviates from the norm. It deviates from the expected process or behavior of our data. So based on this, upon seeing that there is certain kind of anomaly, what are we going to do then? The best thing to do upon seeing this kind of anomaly in our data is to make some kind of verification. In making our machine learning project, we have this what we call the train set, we have the test set, and we have the validation set. So using all of these sets, we would be able to verify whether or not this kind of anomaly is really anomalous or this is just another showmanship that another normal trend is going to happen. And now because we could see some variations in our data in the observable behavior of our data set, this is where the task of anomaly detection algorithm comes in. And this helps discover and infer these variations in our data. And maybe at this point you would want to ask me, is there any specific rule of thumb to help us to evaluate whether or not there are similarities between and among different data points? So the answer to that is, actually, there is no definite rule to measure the distance from one point to another. And with that, we can also say that there is no exact rule of measure that can help us to evaluate how similar one point is from the other. And with that, in this course, we would be able to study the different anomaly detection algorithms that would help us do the process of detecting anomalies and fraud in our data. So in applying the anomaly detection algorithm, we have to think of three possible cases. So these three possible cases would help us to evaluate the correctness of our identification. So first is the correct detection, then second is the false positives, and the third is the false negatives. And we're going to have them one by one. So what is this correct detection? This is actually happens when the abnormality that we have detected in the observation exactly match the abnormalities that we can see in the process. But sometimes we can never properly identify the correct anomalous data points. So with that, false positives may come in wherein we identify a certain data point to be a positive anomalous data when in fact it is not. And also, in some cases, we may be able to falsely claim or falsely identify that a certain data point is negative and that is it is not anomalous, whereas in fact it is not anomalous. So with that, we are going to properly understand the nature of our data and how we're going to minimize the false positives and the false negatives. Of course, we can never perfect everything in our identification, but we can also, at the most, we can only minimize these 
false identifications. Now, the question that would come to mind is this. Is 100% correct detection possible in the real world? In the real world, we cannot identify 100% correct detection. And again, as a data scientist, the most that we can do is we can just minimize the error of our identification, whether it could be the false negatives or false positives. So why is this for? Why do we have to study this? Anomaly detection algorithm can be used in so many fields. It can be used in banking and insurance. It can be used in retail. It can be used in manufacturing. It can be used in IT and telecom. It can be used also in defense and government. And it can also be used in healthcare. So when is it used in banking and insurance? It is used to flag abnormally high transactions. It can also be used to flag fraudulent activity and even phishing attacks. What about in retail? When do we use it in retail? Most often, especially in big retail businesses or companies, we do process a very huge volume of financial transactions. And with the use of anomaly detection, we would be able to identify the fraudulent behaviors of the customers so that we would be able to identify whether or not theft or fraudulent credit card usage is being done. What about in manufacturing? Anomaly detection is very useful in manufacturing because it helps the company identify which of the machines are underperforming and so that it can help the manufacturer do predictive maintenance and so it can lower the cost of the maintenance and it can also increase productivity and of course in the end the gain of the company. What about in the IT and telecom? It is very useful in IT and telecom because it helps the company detect and acts on some personal threats to the clients. It can also help identify financial threats to service providers. In defense and government, anomaly detection is very useful because it can help the government identify unnecessary spending of a certain agency of the government. So with that, it can help the government save a lot of money. In healthcare, anomaly detection can improve the quality of the health services. A healthcare company are with loss of huge amounts of money. And with respect to insurance providers, using anomaly detection can help them identify fraudulent claims from hospitals. And with that, it can decide whether or not to approve or reject a certain claim. After all, being said and done, let's try this. What is anomaly detection? What are the uses of anomaly detection? Please don't forget to write your answers in the comment down below so that we would be able to learn from each other. Do you want to know more about this channel? Let's click these cards. We do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. Here, you can always learn an upskill for free.